this is a, a, a Graptopetalum pentandrum, this lavender plant. And this plant gets a really interesting flower. I don't know if you can see this very well. Um, this is a flower spike that comes up about 12 to 15 inches. So it's a Graptopetalum pentandrum. It sends out branches, but then when it flowers, it gets these really neat flower spikes. And it's a beautiful color, which one of the things that I really focus on with succulents is form, color, and texture. And I really think of these plants as kind of my palette as an artist to work out different designs, whether it's working in the ground or in containers, or in my vertical gardens creating murals. I'm trying to work with the different colors and textures to create really interesting uh, mosaics and combinations between uh, the different plants that kind of accentuate each other. So this particular one's lavender, but the foliage of succulents can vary from uh, different uh, greens, purples, lavenders, reds, oranges, yellows, blues, and so you have lots of color that you can produce with succulent plants. And that's without the flowers. That's with the foliage. And then the bonus is you also get flowers on, on uh, all of these plants. So if you look around the nursery, just, just right where we are, you've got this lavender color right here. And then if you go over here, you have kind of a silver gray color in this cotyledon orbiculata. So the reds of Echeveria giboflora, the silver grays of the cotyledon, the lavender of the graptopetalum, uh, you have kind of a brownish color in this Echeveria, and then you go into uh, this particular one here is uh, Graptovaria fred ives, and, and they're kind of lavenders, then you get into some greens, then you get into the Cystantha grandiflora, which also gets wonderful lavender flowers. So this kind of gives you, just in a short walk of this area, some of the different colors and textures that you actually find in these plants. So this is a terracotta hat that actually goes on a statue of a man who's sitting and sleeping. And uh, I thought, well, it might be fun to plant the hat. So uh, I had a few of these sitting around and, and planted them up. And these are just starting to get their roots. I think if you look closely, you can see the roots on the back of that uh, plant on the stem, the root hairs. You see those? So that's right there. Plug them into the soil. And they're all going to root into here and start growing. And this will probably need a little gardening, but it'll last several years like this, just, just like it is. The plants will kind of push each other around and send out little babies, and they'll creep out over the edge. And, and uh, it'll look very full, but it'll be kind of a fun transition that it goes through. Plants in here are like the murals I plant. These are sempervivums, and there's probably about 10 different varieties of sempervivums and as they mature the colors are going to become different so you'll see more variety in them as they get older and then this is an Echeveria, the Secunda this is an Echeveria Pearl von Nuremberg this is Echeveria elegans and then most of what we have in here other than that is all the different sempervivums interestingly enough now you know, succulents come from three particular environments and, and they've had to adapt to these environments in which water was withheld. The plant that you're looking at right now is called an Easter cactus and it's actually a spring bloomer. And it's similar to a Christmas cactus in that uh, the, the stems and leaves look the same. The flower actually looks different. It's more of a star shape. Can you start that over here? Yeah, Sorry. okay. Uh, right from the beginning on the no, Easter no, cactus. Just, yeah, Tell, this, is an, this is an Easter cactus. This is an Easter cactus. And it's actually an epiphytic cactus. It's from the jungles. And it grows 
uh, flowers in the springtime. Most people are familiar with the Christmas cactus that have flowers in the fall and winter, but this plant is the, the spring bloomer, so they call it an Easter cactus. And these grow in trees and jungles. And so you have succulents that come from deserts. This is a succulent that the plant became succulent, it adapted to this environment, and it became succulent by adapting in the jungle because the water in jungles is often very salty and it's hard for the plants to get any water out of that salty water. So they become thick and they collect the water and hold the water for long periods of time until they can have fresh water. What I said was you have different environments in which the succulents became succulent by adapting. One is the jungle, this Easter cactus, another is the desert, and the third is the alpine regions of the, water, uh, of the world where water is frozen. And an example of the alpine type succulents are a lot of the ones I use in my murals, the sempervivums, and then some of the sedums come from the alpine re regions. And what's really interesting to me about that is people don't typically think of a succulent as growing in an area that's very, very cold. And yet there are quite a few varieties of succulents that grow in areas that go down to maybe 10 degrees or 5 degrees. And those, again, are mostly the alpine type succulents. Uh, this, that's the mural that was at the show. Okay. Uh, this is one that was and it's kind of suffering the effects of having been inside for over a week. Uh, and, and you can see, well, maybe you can, that many of the plants had turned so that they were facing upwards because this was vertical for uh, a little over a week. <clears throat> well, the San Francisco Flower and Garden Show uh, is an annual event that I've been involved in for about five years. And for me, it was a place where I could introduce myself as this succulent grower it's attended by the public, general gardening public, as well as uh, landscapers and architects. And it's a show where you have usually kind of a central arena with big landscapes. And then you have uh, a plant sales area, which is where I originally um, showed my wares and sold my plants. After the first year, it became, um, my plants were kind of a big hit and I got more active in the whole show and I was approached by landscapers who wanted to use my plants in the garden designs that they created for the show. Uh, so I ended up working with uh, a couple of fellows called the Organic Mechanics and they did a garden with my plant material which was a big hit, got a lot of prizes, uh, but then a a year later they had this idea to do another garden with my plants which was also a big hit. Then the third garden was the uh, undersea garden. Thanks Robbie for the tour. I really had a great time looking at this eye candy. What did you call it? Uh, well it's the candy shop. For all the art designers. For all the designers who love to work with succulent plants, absolutely. Oh, and I love it. I've had a great time, too. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very Thank much. Thank you so okay, much. It's been a great day. I'd love to come back sometime. Please yeah. do. Okay, I'll do that. Please invite everybody you know to come see us. I will do that, absolutely. Great. If there's anything you've seen on this tape that you'd like to have more information about or would like to send an email, visit us at www.gardeningrhythms.com or p-h-o-l-o-w-k-o at hotmail.com. Information that you've seen in today's show or anything else will be on there. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>